Hi guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, based on the time zone. So let's just wait for five more minutes, let other people join, and then we're gonna start session. Thank you. Hey guys, once again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, based on your time zone. So how are you now, guys? You can just uh, post it over the Slack channel, which is the live channel. Your comments, your message, your questions, whatever you have regarding the sessions or anything, you can post it over there. So once again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hi, all. So uh, before starting the sessions, like I would like to know like everybody's name. So just let me know what's your name and where you're from and what is your current profession. I'm happy to have this introduction. If, uh, so it will be better like uh, I would know that uh, from where people are and what they are doing right now and then. And then we're gonna move forward with my introduction. Hi everyone. Yep. 
Okay, so how many people do we have today? All right, so I'm assuming like 10, uh, 11 people we have. So it will not take like more than five minutes to just post it over the Slack. Yep. Okay, this is Russell. I used to be a teacher. Great, great. This is Hectic and East Coast and currently a um, math teacher. Awesome. All right. Okay, we got more audience. Uh, so now we have 14 people in the room. Perfect. I'm South Carolina realtor. Wow. This is NG. Awesome. Okay. Yep. Uh, okay. Hi, this is and then Miami. Great. From Canada, said it is here. Teacher. Okay. Cambridge, UK. Awesome. Okay, great. We also have our students. Okay, anybody else who want to introduce? I'm just waiting one or two minutes and then I'll start my introduction. And then we wanna move forward. Okay. Teacher assistant is just great. So I'm assuming like a lot of people, like almost like 50 to 60 percent people are teacher here. So good to know about it. Like great, but I'm not working now. So anybody left? or one more minute uh, anybody else want to introduce they can post it over the slack i'm i'm reading the slack comment right now in live channel all right so we have enough so now we have 15 people in the room great awesome uh so Please confirm you able to see my video as well as you able to hear me very clearly, as well as you can see my screen. Yes. Okay, perfect. So, uh, yes, sound and video good. Okay, all right. So first of all, thank you all for joining this uh, Salesforce journey. Uh, before starting Salesforce, as well as my introduction, just want to highlight some of the points which you're gonna remember every day whenever you're going to join the class. Like, so, uh, somebody saying something? Uh, let me just check if somebody's saying something. Okay, let me just. Okay, so the point is, Whenever you're gonna join that class, I'm gonna post the link over the Slack channel before 10 minutes every day, whenever we have class. So you can join from there. That is the first point. Second point, in my class, you are free to free to unmute. And if you want to speak in front of others, you can do that. As well as if, if you're not feel comfortable, you can post it over the Slack channel, whatever queries and doubt you have, okay? This is the second point and the third point, uh, you are allowed to ask any question. Yeah, that is permanent link. You can bookmark it or every day I will post. So you can join from there also. So either you can bookmark or you can just go on the live channel and just click from there and join on a regular basis. Okay, 
So let's just move ahead. So let's start. So this is your first introduction class uh, regarding the Salesforce. So now if you are joining this class, so I'm assuming that you all know at least what is Salesforce. If not that I'm going to give you the brief idea uh, as well as you know the market of Salesforce right now, how Salesforce, how fast the Salesforce is growing right now. And it is it is beating all the companies in the in the world, not not in the U.S. region, but in the world. That is the power of uh, Salesforce right now. It is started in 1999, and now it is becoming a uh, world's number one company where people want to work, as well as the tech guys who who really want to explore their career, and even the non-tech guy who really want to explore their career, they also moving towards Salesforce. Because just want to tell you one fact, by 2025, Salesforce need 4.2 billion people. It means 4.2 Salesforce technical architect along with consultant, along with developer, along with admin, that much people required to maintain the Salesforce. Because Salesforce now becoming a huge, their servers are huge they are everything gonna be huge so that is why they required 4.2 billion people all around the world to just to maintain the salesforce activity and right now we are shorting like if i calculate around all all over around the world so right now it is shorting like almost uh two point somewhere 2.7 uh, million people are missing in the world who are not ready to join Salesforce because, because of the skills, because uh, all people are not moving towards the Salesforce. That's why. So that is the huge gap we are filling right now. And you have that much opportunity in the world to fill that gap. Now, this is your first session. So I'm going to introduce you Salesforce. What is Salesforce and what is the cloud computing? What is the CRM? And please let me know if I'm if I'm speak very fast or if you if you want me to take a pause, just let me know over the Slack channel. So this is my introduction. Uh, it, this is a little bit about me. My name is Krishna Kumar Yadam. I'm working as a technical architect in Cognizant, and right now I'm in Dubai. So. I'm joining this class from Dubai right now, and I'm 9x Salesforce certified. I'm also an application certified architect from the Salesforce, and uh, I have more than uh, around 3,300 badges, along with the like somewhere 2.79 uh, like points, as well as I'm also a trailhead mentor, and I'm also a community speaker so salesforce organize uh, different different seminars and webinars so uh, some of the community group they invite me to speak there so this is about me if you want to connect with me you can i will forward you my linkedin or twitter you can contact me there as well as you can contact me over the slack channel all right so one more fact which i want to tell you about me uh, okay, one question for you guys. How many people are from non-tech? Like people who who never been to tech industry before or non-IT. How many people are here from non-IT background? Okay. I'm non-IT. Great. I'm out here. Yep. Okay. So one more fact about, uh, just want to highlight that I'm also from non-IT background till 2017. Um, I have I have done my BBA, Bachelor of Business Administration, and I, I started my journey as a business development manager. And, and then uh, when I see the Salesforce growing, then in 2017, I started learning Salesforce. And uh, right now I'm working as a technical architect in Cognizant. So you can assume like if you are starting right now, so if you dedicatedly 
progress in your Salesforce journey, definitely within six months or within upcoming years, uh, you're gonna land up somewhere, maybe a Salesforce admin job or maybe a developer job. And once you're gonna land up, eventually you're gonna move. So I started my job as a uh, junior developer. Four years before I started my journey as a uh, junior developer. Then I uh, gradually move up to the developer, then senior developer, then consultant, and then now working as an architect. So yeah, I will tell you what is what is those meaning. What is the Salesforce admin, developer, then consultant, then architect. So I will tell you about this. This I have this thing in my slide that what is the meaning of each role, uh, in which role you should go, each which role, uh, what you feel like what things you need to do. So this is about me as well as some of the fact uh, related to Salesforce. So let's just move on. So this is the introduction from today's Salesforce class. So I want you to know from your guys, like what you know about Salesforce, what do you think, what is Salesforce? Uh, you can post it over the Slack, or if you want to unmute, you can unmute yourself and you can just let me know what you think, what is Salesforce? It's a cloud platform, okay. Okay, I'm checking this slide also. It's a CRM, okay, good. Cloud, cloud platform, I think it still don't have a clear understanding of it. Yeah, that's that that's okay but still whatever you have you can just let me know number one crm platform great should be related with commerce business yes okay so i'm assuming like uh, people are uh, whatever they are saying like it's pretty much about it, customer relations, of course. So I'm also checking this one, customer satisfaction, connecting between customers and company, of course. So uh, guys, whatever you have uh, commented over the live, or live channel or in Zoom chat, all are correct. Uh, this is all are correct. You can say in your words, in your understanding, whatever you just said, it is correct. Of course, it's a platform. It's related to the cloud as well as it's related to the customer as well as it is related to the business as well as it is related to the customer relationship. So, so um, what you just, uh, what you guys just explained about the Salesforce, whatever you just said, it is correct. But in, in general term or in a overall, um, if you look into that, what is Salesforce? Salesforce is a big giant right now, but originally Salesforce developed as a CRM product. CRM product means, let me just move forward to the slide. So before starting that definition and everything, this is the agenda for today class, which I'm going to cover today. So I hope that uh, somebody also shared the PDF file where you need to create a developer edition of Salesforce, as well as I'm going to show you the steps, how to create, as well as today we wanna create the Trailhead account as well. So these are the agenda I'm going to cover. So since Salesforce connected to the cloud computing, so we're gonna look into what is cloud computing, then we're gonna look into what is CRM and in the CRM, what are the services we have? So we have mainly three kinds of services. SAS, PaaS, and IAS, which I'm going to explain you one by one. So these are the agenda I'm going to cover today. So let's move on one by one. So before starting that, let me just give you uh, another fact, which I already told you in the beginning. Salesforce is a cloud-based technology, first of all, and it is the right number one CRM right now. This is not just it. It is a cloud-based technology in the beginning, but now it is like almost 21 years now, 21 years in Salesforce when Salesforce started. Before when it started, it, 
it launch as a cloud computing, which handle the CRM activity. But now it is more than that. So first we're gonna look into when Salesforce launch. On that time, what is the meaning of Salesforce? And then we're gonna look into what is the actual meaning right now in the current market. Because now Salesforce is not just focusing on CRM, not just focusing on cloud computing. It is focusing more than that. So Salesforce is your customer success platform. Of course, uh, you all have given the answers that it is a platform. It is related to the customer. And why it is related to the customer? Because, and why it is related to the business? Because nowadays, if you, if you can see any business, they, they are struggling to sell their products. They are struggling to sell their services. Uh, they are not uh, reaching to the correct customer or correct buyer to sell their product to sell their services. That's why Salesforce working as a mediator, working as a platform, working as a customer relationship management product, just to connecting the business to the buyers. So Salesforce working in that area, first of all, which help the business to sell their products, sell their services, to market their services or market their products, analyze the business uh, requirement analyze the customer requirement, what customer want. Analyze that where is the uh, business is lagging to sell the products. So these things Salesforce identify. And after the identification, Salesforce generate a product over the cloud computing platform. And that product is going to use by the business as well as the customer. I'm going to give you one example related to this let's suppose i'm i'm a business owner and right now uh, i'm selling a, a wi-fi connection okay but because of due to pandemic like you know that it's a covid situation like we just coping up right now so i'm not able to identify the correct customers even i'm not able to reach to those customers this is just a small example now if if i'm not over the internet uh, many people are not going to uh, buy my Wi-Fi or router or whatever services I'm selling. But Salesforce providing a cloud platform. What is cloud meaning? Cloud meanings like uh, from anywhere, from any point, I can access my uh, local repository. Same like Google Gmail. Uh, like you guys using your Gmail, your Outlook, uh, and whatever email services you are using or even a WhatsApp or any kind of instant messaging or email messaging services you are using, you can log in from anywhere. You have your username, you have your passwords and you log in and you check your emails. You can send your emails. Same like, uh, it is just not uh, sending an email or receiving an email. In Salesforce, Salesforce developed something else, but it's over the cloud. So you can log in anytime you can do whatever you want to do in that platform. And then once you're done, you can log out. So Salesforce develop a product which helped the business. So here I'm, I want to sell my product or services to the customer, but I don't have any way to reach to the customer. So Salesforce provided me one platform where I can design my website. Once I design my website, I can launch over the platform of Salesforce. And once I launch over the Salesforce platform, I can, I can just share that uh, website link and customer can uh, go on that link from anywhere in the in the world. And then um, they can contact me directly through that website. And it is happening because of the sale. This is just a small example, which I'm giving you, but it is not just to selling the Wi-Fi or router. So it is selling everything over the Salesforce platform Initially, when it is started, it just focusing on the uh, banking sector in the beginning, as well as the retailing sector. But now sales was focusing on education, health, even the uh, industries which are not part of the retail sector, even the banking sector, which are not related to the financial government. Now it sales was also focusing on nonprofit organization. Sales was giving them a free license to use their product for the nonprofit organization. Also, now Salesforce also entering into the uh, Netflix, like a Netflix uh, 
cloud computing where sales was gonna be upload a lot of content so you can you can you can take take a subscription and you can see those content as well as sales was also going to launch a sound cloud where you can where you can log in and you can you can listen your music uh, watch your movies sales was also planning to launch that platform also so Salesforce identifying those requirements where the business lagging to sell their product to the customer, where the customer lagging, customer not able to find the proper services or product. So Salesforce identifying those gaps between the buyer and seller, and then Salesforce designing those services over the platform, and it is launching those services through the cloud. So cloud means a customer can access from anywhere, a business can access from anywhere so this is this is the small idea or a small introduction about salesforce what is salesforce doing right now what is salesforce when it is started what is done by the salesforce initially so of course salesforce started by 1999 by mark benioff so mark benioff is a formal uh, executive from the uh, there is a was the company name? Uh, it's a Ado Ado. Um, it's Ado company now. Oracle now people know from the name of Oracle. Previously it is Ado. So Mark Benioff is from the Oracle chief executive, uh, and he left that company in 1999, and he started the Salesforce. So uh, this is about a small introduction about Salesforce. Now you got the idea what Salesforce are doing right now. Salesforce identifying the need between the customer and the buyer and the seller. And once it is identified those requirements, it launched the product over the platform. And product can be anything. The product, if I name it, it's a sales cloud, service cloud, community cloud, health cloud, education cloud, industry cloud, these are the product Salesforce launch. This is just few name, but right now in the market, there are 34 cloud services, which is provided by Salesforce. 34 cloud service. And in each cloud, Salesforce have a different modules, different practice. If I talk about sales cloud or service cloud, because here in the Salesforce journey, I'm going to explain you sales cloud and service cloud, because those are the base cloud which you really need to have a good knowledge over those uh, knowledge you can build up your community knowledge your other platform knowledge as well so let's just move on so in this definition uh the definition of salesforce there are two words and those two words you also explain that it is a cloud as well as it is a number one crm so these two words I want to highlight, I want to let you know that what is the actual meaning of cloud? What is the actual meaning of CRM? So first of all, we're gonna understand what is actual CRM. So the word is, a, is an acronym, which means like customer relationship management. So first of all, why it is required? Why sales was focusing on CRM? Uh, a normal, a normal idea. Uh, let's say if you guys or if I'm going to open a business or open a services, then of course why I'm opening the services or businesses because I want to sell. Uh, and who to whom I'm going to sell? Maybe I can sell to the single customer or maybe a group of customer or maybe a, another company so that another company is going to be my customer. So once I'm going to sell my product or services to those customers, I should have a good relationship with them. If, if I'm not going to have a good relationship with them, then uh, next time they're not going to come to my place and not going to buy a services or a product. So that is also important that a good and healthy relationship between buyers and sellers. Also, like let's say, since I'm going to start the business in the beginning, maybe I don't have much customer, but later on when I'm going to have more customers, how I'm going to track my sales, that how many people I have sold in a day, in a month, on a, in a yearly basis. 
which product I'm going, I'm selling very good or which product I need to have focus more or, or vice versa. So how I'm going to identify those information. So I need to track that information on a daily basis. So in the beginning, like when the business started, I'm talking about like 1960 or 1950. On that time, when, when the business started, they does not have these electronic things. So what they do, they normally write on a, on a piece of paper or in a, in a booklet, they write like, okay, today I sell uh, this much product and this much profit I have earned. That is from 1950 or 1940 things. But now, if I'm talking about nowadays, like whenever you sell any product or whenever you do anything, they have some kind of software in their system. Or maybe if I take about one example, like it is an Excel sheet. So uh, there are some many business right now, uh, small businesses who use the Excel sheet, who put on a daily basis, like how many, how many product they have sell, on which quantity they have sell, uh, what is the price, what is the total amount they sell. And on a monthly basis, they do the filtering, sorting on the Excel sheet, and then they then they gonna identify, okay this much product I have sell, this is my best customer, this is that and that. So those are the information they are tracking in the Excel sheet. But now that is very much important to just to track the information because we want to make a good relationship with customers. To who, who are my customer? How I'm going to know? If I'm not going to track that information, how I'm going to know that which is my best customers who are a good customer to whom I should give more discount or maybe because one thing you should know that customer only come to you only for two reasons. If the customer coming again and again at your place, there are only two possible reasons. One reason, your product or service is really, really good. They feel satisfaction when they buy the product or services from you. This is the first reason. And the second reason, uh, maybe your uh, nature or behavior, how you deal with them. So that thing is uh, giving them an idea that I should go to that shop. Uh, this is this is human tendency. Whenever you go anywhere, you like some places, you like the services, you like the nature of that guy who's selling the uh, KFC product in the KFC, or maybe it is near to your location. But these two factors are the major ones. Maybe their product or service is really, really good. Or maybe the way uh, dealing with you or uh, behaving with you is really good. Those are the two reasons that customer go on a regular places. So um, now you need to identify what are the customers you have done, how many people you sold. So uh, still there are some businesses who, who track those information through the Excel sheet. But uh, if I talk about the big big giants or big companies, they're not using Excel sheet. They use uh, some kind of software. In that software, they they do this, uh, they store those information and then they run some kind of business logics and then they populate the results. So same way, there is a customer relationship management. Uh, it is a software. It is a piece of software which just maintain the interaction with customers. So interaction means like whatever we're doing with customer, maybe we are doing the marketing of, of our product or maybe we are selling that product to the customer or maybe we are getting the feedback related to the customer or maybe we are providing the support after the product we sold to the customer. A customer call us that asking that uh, I'm having problem uh, while using your product. Can you please uh, connect over the call or can you please explain me how to use it? So anything, uh, any interaction with customer which we're going to have. In the CRM product, in the CRM, we're going to capture that interaction. And once you're going to capture those interactions, that interaction can be anything. It can be a marketing call. It can be a sales to the product, it can be a feedback. Like after selling the product service, I can ask for feedback. So that thing also possible to capture in the CRM product. So CRM is a customer relationship management. It is a strategy managing the organization relationship and interaction with customers. 
So that is the actual meaning of CRM. We are just um, doing the management of the relationship between buyers and sellers and whatever interaction they are having, we are just capturing that interaction into a software. Yes, correct. So this is just an example. Okay, somebody is raise a hand, let me see. Uh, yeah. When you check flight tickets a few times, subsequently the price increased suddenly. Is it by the help of uh, Salesforce? No, this is not helped by the Salesforce. This is done by the artificial intelligence. It, it is done by the uh, artificial intelligence. It is, a, it is a, again a, another language because now everybody focusing on artificial intelligence. So if you see the uh, Alexa, the Alexa in the market, or if you see in the Apple, there is a Siri. Whenever we whenever we say something to them, they they do something. They are so same like Alexa. There is a uh, there is a AI artificial intelligence. Uh, even Salesforce also investing in the artificial intelligence. What it do? It will just capture the human voice, human behavior, human pattern, the pattern which we repeat every day. So suppose if you are if you are uh, checking a flight. Uh, you you start checking and then initially it is low and now it is getting increased. Why? Because that behind the scene that uh, artificial intelligence language is capturing your pattern. So if suppose you are you are you are checking your flight from let's say sixth of December. So sixth of December I'm traveling from Dubai to India again. So uh, I was checking that flight yesterday. In the beginning it is low, but after ten to fifteen minutes search it the same flight is is like uh, 100 or 20 bucks uh, more so behind the scene there's a uh, AL language is working but salesforce uh, it is not salesforce it is a al part which salesforce also focusing to implement in the salesforce so uh, so yeah somebody have raised the hand so uh, you can let me know yeah, say that's the creation. Just a yeah. question. Uh, I just want to find out probably most of the companies already have their CRM systems before, yeah. right? Yeah. And what is, what is the basic motivation to convince them to upgrade their CRM system into uh, Salesforce? Yeah, that is that is that is my upcoming slide. After the example, I'm going to let you know that. Uh, when I'm going to explain you the features of Salesforce and the advantage of Salesforce, automatically you will get the answer that why uh, other system or other company have to move through the Salesforce. You will automatically get the answers. Okay, thanks. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So let's move on. So this is just an example what I have given. So each business, each companies have these these three people they should have a marketing people or sales people as well as the customer services people who who daily call to the customer or maybe interact over the emails because nowadays like uh calling sometimes calling is not not a good part so they just drop an email to the customer asking for their feedbacks so uh let's say if i have an ice cream parlor and i want to track the information like how many ice cream i have sold and which ice cream uh, is the best selling and in which season I'm selling the ice cream more. So those kind of information and from where people are coming at my place, uh, which are the age category who buy the ice cream uh, more from my store. So those kind of information I can track over the CRM software. And in that software, I can have a marketing department, I can have a sales department and I can have a customer services department. I can differentiate the information based on these departments. So one of the questions like uh, said it just asked that the, the answer to that uh, in a short way, like nowadays, like if you look about, if you Google it, like how many uh, CRM software is there in the market, there are tons of software. And the giants are like, if I talk about there is a SAP, which is also a CRM, then there is a Microsoft uh, Azure, they also have a CRM, then there is a AWS that they also have a CRM. And then there are like Zoho and then customer 360. There are like bunch of uh, CRM software which are popular in the market. But why Salesforce become number one? 
so the so the one reason which i feel while learning the salesforce it it's the ui that ui is really really interactive if you look into the say, sap if you look into the azure aws zoho uh, some of them have a good ui but not uh, not the best one so the salesforce ui which i'm going to show you uh, when we going to start the first part is ui because ui is really really user friendly when you when you log in into salesforce when you look into any piece of software that is really important after that you can build anything in salesforce you can connect any system to the salesforce the others other crm tools they have a limitation some of them what is ui yeah that is a user interface user interface means whenever you log in into any whenever you log in into gmail or whenever you log in into your whatsapp let's say you open your whatsapp so the so the things you showing in whatsapp or gmail that is your ui uh, user interface so same way salesforce have developed uh, their uh, unique ui as well as you can also develop your own ui uh, if you don't like the salesforce provide out of the box you can you can develop your own ui you can develop according to your business requirement let's say salesforce develop the ui in in blue and gray and white color but your business logo have a green and red and white color so you can you can change the ui just click of buttons you will no need to write any code for that you can just go in a setting and you can do some setting and then the colors and everything got changed automatically that is uh, that is that is why people are moving toward the salesforce because handling the salesforce doing something over the salesforce it's not required you to code every time even almost if you are good in salesforce admin which we going to have after one month definitely i will make sure that everybody have a good idea about salesforce admin if you have a good knowledge about the salesforce then definitely 80% of business requirement you can just do by click drag and drop and just turning on turning off some settings you no need to write even a single line of code you just have to turn on some settings turn on some uh areas where you need to turn on you can do some there and then you good to go that is why people are loving salesforce because if you go into the other crm software those if you want to make a single change you have to write a code over there even a single change sap i also worked on sap uh, when i was working as a business development manager on that time i have used the sap software on that time if something happen over the ui every time we have to wait a tech guy from the back end he he took like almost two or three days to fix it just to just the ui part he if he want to fix if we want that box from here to there he took almost one day to shift that box but in sales was if i want to shift anything just just a 10 to 15 minute task and i can change the whole ui in the sales world. that is that is the power of sales for crm that if you have a basic knowledge of admin you can also do on your you no need required of very much tech guy who know the coding nothing there is nothing like there is no concept like and sales was only focusing on those things which are related to admin there are development part also if you really want to build like a very good uh, platform application which can handle bulk of data or a lot of areas then you can go to the coding part also but if you just want to maintain a mid level of company size crm not just crm but other clouds you can just drag and drop and click and everything done that is why people are loving to use the sales also if you go if you buy any other crm platform and the costing is relatively very high but in salesforce it is like uh whenever you want to have want to use you can just pay the subscription uh whenever you don't want to use it just don't pay the subscription that is the fund so it is based on the subscription base so you just buy a license you buy the subscription and you can use it 
Okay, so let's move on. I'm checking if anybody have any questions. Nope. So these are the benefits of CRM, which I already explained. So I'm just gonna read it for you. Better client relationship, of course. Uh, when you using the any piece of software as a CRM, that says uh, we are using a Salesforce, so our client relationship would, would be better because we are tracking the information. We know that which customer are buying more product from us, what things we have to give them. Improve ability to cross sale, of course. Uh, when you are tracking the information, you eventually when you grow in your business, you gonna you're gonna expand your business activities. Maybe right now you are selling the ice cream. Maybe later on you're gonna uh, you're gonna sell the bakery items or or some other items. So you can do the cross selling in the same platform. Increase team collaboration, of course. When you are maintaining or maintaining those information over the CR. Uh, you can have a better collaboration, team collaboration, where you can look each team information. Team information like there is a marketing team, there is a sales team, and there is a service team. So you can track each team information separately in the CRM. And then later on, when they want to collaborate in somewhere, let's say one customer where marketing team also working, even the sales team also working, even the service team also. So all three can share that same customer information in one UI. They no need to go to sales department to ask that, can I have this customer information? They all three log in at the same time and after login, they can see the same customer information and in their desktop, in their laptop. They no need to go to sales department to ask the information like this. Improve efficiency in serving clients. Of course, uh, when you're going to have a CRM, Salesforce as a CRM, then of course uh, you're going to improve the efficiency of serving clients because you are tracking the information. You know that what is going on in your business, how much profit you are earning, what are the areas you have to improve. Greater staff satisfaction. Of course, when you are tracking those information in the piece of software, so you know that uh, how much staff you need and each staff dedicated related to particular area. And once they do the uh, any particular activity, they have the suggestion. If you're going to let them do more activities, more different, different activities, then our staff will feel frustrated. If they focus on only one activity, which they are good at, they will feel more satisfaction. Increase revenue and profitability. Okay, uh, I got one question like uh, cross sale. Cross sale means like, uh, let's say I'm selling right now ice cream. I have ice cream parlor and my ice cream I'm selling in the Miami region. Let's say I'm selling in the Miami. But later on, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm having good customer now and I open the second branch in, in California also, or any other use region I have opened. Now I also have a good response from there. But now uh, I'm, I'm seeing there one more opportunity that there in that area, I don't have any bakery, bakery shop or, uh, or any, any other opportunity. Let's say uh, not a bakery shop, but, but a, a retail market of the ice cream parlor. So what I can do, I can, I can I grab that opportunity and I can, I can open a big giant or a big retail store related to the ice cream parlor or related to the bakery item. So previously I'm selling as a, as an ice cream parlor, but now I become into the bakery owner. So I'm transitioning my business from one particular area and I'm expanding into the another area because bakery is not my main profession. My main profession is an ice cream parlor, but I, I, I saw that opportunity and I, I, I shift my opportunity into the bakery. So if I talk about like, let's say I'm selling a, a Wi-Fi or routers or computer, computer, or any technical item, let's say I'm selling a mobile phone. So uh, after after analyzing the requirement, that area also required a, a repair shop. So I can I can open a repair shop for them. So that is a cross selling. So cross selling is like it, it is a it is a another opportunity in the same region what you are doing right now. So if you if you're able to identify that opportunity, you can open the business in that area also. So that is called cross selling. 
you 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 got the opportunity another one and you are start selling another product but your main product is like whatever you are doing in the beginning that is your main product so eh, increased revenue and profit of course when you when you track everything everything each department have a, a correlation between other teams as well as the client also having a satisfaction even your staff also get satisfied so you have more revenue and profitability and of course when you track those information you will know that where you need to focus more where you need to do the cost saving let's say you are selling a uh, 10 type of ice cream but uh, two of the ice cream people are not liking so you you stop making those one uh, you by stop making those when you will you will saving your cost because nobody like those ice creams because it is not the best selling even you're not able to get the uh, profit from those two ice creams so you can you can reduce those ice cream production even let's say you have a more staff or maybe uh, maybe uh, let's say previously you you hire someone who delivery the product who deliver your ice cream to the customer doorstep but now uh, instead of giving them any other delivery, you you hire your own delivery van and you are delivering your uh, other customers. So that is also a saving. Also, you can identify your areas where you can improve your costing. And th that those improvements come when you have the all information track in a CRM. Then only you know that, okay, this is the area I can reduce my cost. This is the area I can, I can increase my profit. That thing only possible if you have all the information in in one platform and that platform called a CRM. And CRM is a piece of software where we uh, record the information which is related to the uh, customer interaction with the business. This is an overall term. This is not just a Salesforce term. The CRM, it's a piece of software where we maintain the information related to the customer interaction with the business. So Salesforce focus initially on this CRM opportunity and they introduced their platform as a service where they have launched the sales cloud and service cloud as a product to use. But now Salesforce uh, working on 34 clouds. So in the 34 cloud, Salesforce providing their services, not just CRM, but uh, some other areas as well. So since I have explained you uh, CRM, Please let me know before moving to the cloud if anybody have any question related to the CRM definition or anything. Up till now, if anybody have any questions or any area which you want me to repeat. Okay, or if you want me to move forward. So I'm thinking about to take a one uh, five minute break. We can have a five minute break and then we can start back. So you can you can you can grab your coffee or tea or water, and then we're gonna start from what is cloud company. Okay. All right. So let me just put the uh, stopwatch. So we're gonna start from the cloud company. Okay. Let me say. Let me start the stopwatch five minutes is okay no guys five minutes is enough to grab the water tea and coffee or uh, i guess five minutes is okay right yeah all right yeah so let me just share my screen to start the watch All right, guys, see you after five minutes. Yeah, uh, I'll answer your question. The last one, which we have after the five minute break.
Hi guys, I'm back. Uh, let me know once you all are back. So we're gonna start back. Let me just share my screen again. Okay, so uh, everybody is back now. So before moving further, I, I would like just to answer that question. Uh, which job title does handle Salesforce CRM in your company? So uh, it is not a job that who handle the CRM activity. Actually, what is going on when you buy, when let's say I'm doing a business of ice, ice cream parlor, I contact to the sales force and then I buy the license. And that, that license is per user. It means uh, how many users in my company who are going to use the use that sales force. Let's say there's a sales team. I have two people there. And there's a marketing team. I have two people. And then service team, they have, they have two people. So I need six license because I have six people. Those six people are going to use the uh, sales for CRM, sales cloud or service cloud. So for sales people, I can, I can buy a sales cloud license. For marketing people, I can buy a marketing cloud license. And for service cloud, I can buy a two service cloud license. So I bought six license for those six people. So once I bought those license, I, I'm going to create a user in that sales force. I'm going to create a six user for those six people. And after creating, they're gonna generate their password and you uh, log in your login username, and then they're gonna log in. I'll show you that uh, how they're going to do. But uh, if I talk about your question, like uh, what job title handles Salesforce CRM activity? Yeah, each in, in Salesforce. So there is not a CRM. Uh, job which handle it is it is related to salesforce admin salesforce development salesforce architect and salesforce consultant so what it means if you talk about like the crm activity which you handle you're not going to handle the crm activity it is their company user it is that let's say if if, if there is a nike company so in the nike company there is a sales sales representative marketing representative and then service service representative. They those are the end user who are going to use the Salesforce. It is not your duty to to handle the CRM activity. Your duty, let's say I bought that license for those six people. Now I want to I want to implement. I want to I want that design. I want that functionality because Salesforce giving you the platform now. They that user login, they don't know where to go. They they want this kind of UI. They want that if they put something that they give you the requirement after buy, after buying the license, they don't know how to how to insert the data, how to do that. Those things now your job role is come into the picture. Creating an object, creating a data sheet, creating an everything, creating the UI. Now your job and now your from here, it is your role as a Salesforce admin, as a Salesforce development. You're not going to handle the CRM activity. It is the company users who are going to use the that CRM. We have to configure that CRM for them. We have up, now this configuration can be done through admin part. If it is a small one or, or a medium one, if it is a major one, then we're going to go to the development part and we're going to develop those things. And after development, we're going to provide that uh things to those six users so that those six users can log in and can use and can store the data so our as a salesforce developer as a salesforce admin as a salesforce consultant as a salesforce architect it is our duty to develop and design and architect everything for those users and then once it's done they're going to use uh i hope this uh, you got the idea we're not going to handle the CRM activity. It is the company user who buying the Salesforce license. It is their user who going to handle the CRM activity. 
we are just going to configure that CRM. We are just going to build, let's say, uh, out of the box functionality. I got some features, but they want to build some more features. So for that, we have to use admin part, development part. And then once it's done, we're gonna, we gonna provide them so they can use it. Anything extra, anything configuration, anything customization, it's come to the admin part, development part, consulting part, and architect part. Once it's done, it is the end user, and the end user is always from the company side, not from our side. Our responsibility, our duty, since you are learning a Salesforce admin and Salesforce development, it is your duty to develop that functionality, to configure that functionality into their Salesforce org. And once you're done, they're going to use. That's it. I'll show you those things in a real time. How I have some license from the Salesforce. Sandbox also, as well as the free developer edition. I'll show you that how this thing are going on. So this is just an first initial class. So uh, you just focus on the these terms because these terms coming every day, cloud computing, CRM, this, these things coming every day, every day classes. So you should be you should be good in those areas first. And then uh, the, the thing which you just asked that uh, are we going? Is there any job title which handle the sales for CRM? No, there is no job title which handle the sales for CRM because handling the sales for CRM is from company side. It is a company user to whom they buying the license. Our responsibility, our duty is just to configure customization of that Salesforce platform. And after that, we just provide them that we have done, you can use it. Each individual has to have each license. Yeah, of course. So in a real time, Salesforce selling a license user-based. So let's say you want to use a marketing cloud and you want one marketing cloud license. So only one marketing user can log in. You can able to create only one username and password. And with that only, at a time, only one user can log. Okay, so let's move on to the, what is cloud computing? So nowadays you, you're hearing this word cloud computing more of time. Uh, before giving you the explanation of cloud computing, let me just talk about that. I'm talking about 1940s, 1950s. On that time, if you, if you really want to build something over the over the tech industry, you have to buy the storage, you have to buy the networks, you have to buy the tech specialist. You have to bought these kind of things. Then you have to buy the equipments, and then you set up a server, then you set up a connection, then you set up a database. And for setting up those things, you need you need a highly trained professionals in IT industry. If I talk about 1960, 1970, on that time, this is the this is the thing required on that time. But now, thanks to the cloud computing, now it is no more required. We does not require a database. We does not require the connections. We does not require the servers. We does not require the equipments also to establish those things. Nowadays, everything on virtual, everything on virtual. So I uh, give you one example, let's say your Gmail account. So what you do on a daily basis, like you just put your username and password and you log in. And after you log in, you just check your emails. If you want to send an email, you can send the email. If you want to send a file, you can send the file also. And in the email, you also got the Google Drive. Uh, in that Google Drive, you put your files. You got up to 15 GB free space. So in that 15 GB free space, you put your data. You can also use Google Sheets uh, as a Word document, as a PPT. So those things are free provided by the Salesforce up to 15 GB. After that, if you if you are exceeding that limit uh, that Google is asking you to pay, or if you want to increase your space, you have to buy a subscription from Google. But previously, if you want to implement this kind of functionality, you have to buy a servers, you have to buy networks, you have to buy data storage, then the highly trained professional who can configure those things. But because of the cloud computing, now it is on demand, self-service. It is a remote server where we're going to store, manage, and process our data. All the data is not 
going to reside in your computer. It is going to store over the cloud. So when you write any email, when you send any, any email, it is not going to store in your local drive. It is over the Gmail server. So whenever you want to access that data, you just log in into Gmail and you can access. Same way, Salesforce have implemented everything over the cloud where you will get a username and password when you log in through that username and password, you will have everything. Whatever services they are providing, you can check what are the services, what are the license I have, what users in my organization, those things you will see. So nowadays, the cloud computing meanings, first of all, it is a remote server. You does not have to buy a physical equipment for that. You only need to have a username and password where you can log in and you can manage and store and process your data. Now it is on demand. For this, you only require two things. First, a, a Wi-Fi connection or an internet connection. And second thing, uh, your laptop or desktop. Those are the two requirement to access the Salesforce data, to access Salesforce services anywhere in the world. If you want to access anything from Salesforce, just uh, internet connection and the laptop or desktop or maybe a phone. If you are using a Salesforce application in the phone, so phone. So these three things are required just to access your data. Everything in the Salesforce you can access directly through internet. And that, that thing is possible through the cloud computing because cloud computing means you are accessing your data from somewhere, but your actual data is residing uh, on the servers and that servers can be anywhere in the world. Yeah, of course, you can back up your data into the hard drives. Those data, whichever is there in your cloud storage, you can back up all the data in your local drive as well. But you can only back up those data up to a certain level. If you want to back up all the data, you have to raise the request. Uh, you have to connect to the Salesforce support team. They're going to give you the all data access so you can back up. So you can back up into the local drive. Yes. So you need a broad network access, resource pooling. Resource pooling means, uh, let's say at a time, I'm also using the Salesforce. Uh, I'm a part of that organization. And then there are 15 other users who are also going to use that Salesforce. So uh, the same Salesforce all. So what is doing? Uh, if I talk about the example of Gmail, let's say uh, every second, like there are min millions of people are, who are accessing the Gmail. So behind the scene, if how Gmail or how Google is managing, they having the resource pooling. Resource pooling means, let's say in the backend, let's say they have a 15, 15 resource. 15 resource, you can understand like a agent, like a agent. In a real time, if we go to the airport, and just to boarding and check in on that time there there are uh, air flight attendants who, who check our boarding pass and everything and then they gonna let us in into the plane same way when you put your username and password in gmail on that time in the behind there is a 15 agents or virtual agent who going to who going to map your username and password they just check whether the user existing in the gmail server or not if it is exist, they're going to let you in. If it is not, they're going to throw the error on the UA. That username and password is not correct. So same way, 15, if millions of people log in at a time, on that time, those 15 virtual agents, they do the resource pooling. Resource pooling means, let's say, a 10 people log in at the same time. So all 10 people get divided and under the 15 agent. So they can check it uh, and then they're going to let you know let you in the sale in the Gmail once you log in. So that's how they're going the resource pooling. So in the backend, whatever agents are working, it is a virtual agent. It is a piece of code written behind the scene who check the username and password. Once it is done, they're gonna let you in. So this resource pooling they are doing through the servers. There is a there is a resource pooling mechanism in the servers when you implement. That is a very vast thing. So just for understanding, think like that. If 
millions of people going to use the Salesforce in a in a single second. So Salesforce have a resource in the backend who do the resource pooling. Resource pooling means they're just dividing the users into chunk. So in one shot, a 10 people log in instantly and then 20 and then 30 and 40 and 50 like this. But we see that when we log in, we log in instantly. It is for user experience. But in the back end, if million people log in in one second, Salesforce let them log in into chunks. That's how they do the resource pool. And then rapid elasticity. Rapid elasticity means like they can scale their network at their will. If they want to expand their network from other areas, from other sectors, because right now Salesforce is, uh, if there are some areas in the world where Salesforce is not reachable yet, I mean, you can log in into the Salesforce from anywhere, but Salesforce does not have market on those areas. There are some countries, there are some cities where the Salesforce is not uh, implemented yet. So we have the opportunity, opportunity to implement there. So we can scale, we can scale the Salesforce network there also. So these all things are related, whichever in the cloud computing, these are like uh, in a technical terms. So uh, no need to bother about it, like no need to go in detail because this is in the backend side. You just need to understand the cloud computing means we have a remote server where we are storing, managing and processing our data uh, online where we just put a username and password and then we do our things and we log out. So whatever things we are doing, it is it is going to store in the remote service. And the same thing Salesforce have implemented. Okay, so let's just move on. So these are the things which are mandatory for cloud computing. Where, as I told you, hardware, maybe a laptop, PC or mobile. And then you should have a network connection because we are going to use a cloud and cloud is on over the internet. So we need an internet connection and then a server. So this server is going to be a mediator between your hardware and the database. So here, when we're going to use the Salesforce, so we have a Salesforce server, which is going to connect our hardware with our the Salesforce database. Database where our data is storing, hardware is our laptop or PC. So when we're going to put username and password, so it is going to connect our hardware with that database, Salesforce database. Which top five countries have more use and implementation? For now, uh, the number one is UK, then US, and then uh, there's a uh, Europe side. In the Europe side, I, uh, it's a Netherlands and Germany, and then in Australia, and um, uh, one more is Singapore. These are the countries right now, which heavily using the Salesforce, heavily, heavily. If you if you go in the uh, Google also, US, UK, then uh, Europe side, and then Australia, and then Singapore. These are the these are the uh, areas where Salesforce heavily focusing. Right now, Salesforce focusing in Africa region also. So now they are expanding their business in Africa as well as um, they are planning to implement the same thing in uh, in the side of Turkey. They are planning to open one branch there, Turkey, and then they also going to implement, uh, um, there's, a, there's an area called Arctic Bay. They also going to implement the server there also. So uh, I will let you know that how you can update yourself on a daily basis related to Salesforce. There is a Salesforce daily news channel, which you can which you can subscribe over there. Like uh, because you know Salesforce every every four months Salesforce release a new feature. So that feature you should be aware. So how you wanna keep yourself updated? I will also let you know that how I keep myself updated. The same way I'm going to let you. Know. So, because you know, nowadays in every four months, Salesforce changing something. So you should be aware. It is not a major change, like, but it is a functionality change or feature change. That's it. And then the database. So database, it, it is where we're going to store our uh, information. 
So these things are mandatory in cloud computing. And the same thing Salesforce have implemented through say, through laptop, PC or mobile, we can access Salesforce. Then to access that, we have to require a network connection. And then the server is the Salesforce server here. And the database is the Salesforce database where we're going to uh, store our data. Now, these are the services provided by the cloud company. So whenever you go in the market and you want to buy a cloud computing services, those services come into three different flavor. One is a SaaS, which is a software as a service. Second one is a PaaS, which is a platform as a service. And third one is a, as it is an infrastructure as a service. So software as a service, you can understand like a Gmail or your Salesforce. Salesforce.com and Gmail and then WhatsApp and then Zoom and then Google Meetings. These are the software as a service. It means we are not doing anything. We are just using as it is. Whatever features come in the market, we are just using directly. We are not doing any development. So we are the end user. So right now I'm using a Zoom meeting to connect with you. You also using a Zoom meeting to connect with me. So it is a software as a service. And behind the scene, I'm, I'm using my hardware, which is a laptop. You also using your laptop or mobile. And then we, we are connected through the internet. So these things are coming in between. So this Zoom application is working as a software as a service because we are just using directly. We are not doing anything. Then the platform as a service, it means we, buy, we bought some platform as a service and then we building our own services in that. So same way, when say when company bought a license for Salesforce, we got two licenses. One is a SaaS and one is a PaaS. So salesforce.com is a SaaS and then force.com is a PaaS. So in the force.com, we're going to develop our own custom application. We're going to write a code. We're going to implement some logics. And then we're going we're gonna to modify the platform. And then after modifying the platform, we're going to launch our own software as a service. So Salesforce provide two things. One is a SaaS and second one is a PaaS. Yeah, uh, it is in the next slide, don't worry. It is in this slide, don't worry. I have put it here, everything. So you will, uh, I'm also going to share my PPTs with you guys. No need to worry about it. So uh, don't worry about it. So whatever content I have, you also going to have the same content. I'm going to share this PPT over the channel so you can, so no need to write or type anything. Uh, just, just uh, you just want to understand. Yeah, I thought force.com is going to be No. So I'll, uh, we just started the session. So just be patient. I'm going to explain you one by one because you no, know, it it is a fast session. So definitely the doubt, doubts will come as I'm going to move forward. The doubt will come more and more. But once you got familiar with Salesforce. I mean like two or three day class, then you will automatically going to have a, a good understanding that what is Salesforce, what is this SaaS, what is this PaaS. It is just a beginning class, so definitely you, you will have a doubt. So just understand, now this is this cloud service model, which you need to uh, pay attention. Whatever I just explained you in the previous slide, what is a SaaS, what is a PaaS, what is a... So, SaaS means packaged software or application which we're going to use directly. So it is for end user directly. So right now I'm using a Zoom application. You also using Zoom application. So it is a it is a direct application. We are just using. We are just direct login and we just click on that link and we join the meeting. And through joining the meeting, I'm 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 giving my session to you. I'm sharing my screen. We are just directly using this application features. We are not modifying any features. We are just directly using. So whenever you are using any feature directly, you're not doing anything. It is a SaaS application. 
So SaaS application have three features. First, it should be over the internet and you should have a hardware to connect. And then third is a database. So here in this Zoom application, we are connected through the internet and then the data is on the Zoom account because whatever recording is happening, it is going to save into the Zoom, Zoom server. And then later on, I can download from there. You can also download from there. And we are the end user who, who using this Zoom application. So this Zoom application is one of the example of SaaS application. Same way in Salesforce, we have some application, predefined application, which we can directly use. So there is a sales cloud application, there is a service cloud application, which I'm going to show you when I'm going to log in into Salesforce. There are whenever you, whenever company bought any license from Salesforce, uh, some of the predefined application is there. If, if you want to use it, you can directly use it. So when you're going to use those application, is Messenger or FaceTime considered? Yes, Messenger, FaceTime, Facebook, WhatsApp, Gmail, these all are SaaS application. It means we are not doing anything. We are just directly using as an end user. So these all are uh, SaaS application. So SaaS application only have two conditions. One, it should be connected to the internet. And the second one, there should be a data storage where we can store the data. So right now, uh, let's say over the Slack channel. Slack is also a SaaS model. It is also a uh, SaaS application. We are just we are just connecting through Slack. I'm just checking your comment. I can also post files and then we are not modifying anything. We are just using this Slack application features. So we are the end users for this SaaS application. Same way, when, when we're going to log in into Salesforce, there are some predefined application which is already there, which we're going to use. So when we're not going to do any modification or anything, and we're just directly going to use, it is a SaaS application. Now, the second one, PaaS, platform as a service. So in the SaaS application, Salesforce.com is a SaaS application. So whenever you're going to log in into Salesforce, you're going to use login.salesforce.com. That is your SaaS application. And whenever you're going to do any customization, any modification, or you want to build your own application, on that time, we're going to use force.com. I will show you that force.com. Although it is from the salesforce.com, but behind the scene, there is a force.com is working. QuickBook also, also one of the example. Then Google Sheets, Google Drive, these all are a SaaS application example. Now in the PaaS application example, we we going to build our own application. We're not going to use a inbuilt application. We're going to build the application from the scratch. Let's say I want to build this Zoom application, but I don't want, I want some more extra features. I want to, I want to change the name of this application. I want to change everything. I don't want to use this application. I want to build my own. So to build a new application over the Salesforce platform, a Salesforce provides us a force.com as a pass where we can where we can develop our own application. And after development, either we can use it or we can say sell that application over the Salesforce marketplace. So there are some companies, not some companies, there are a lot of companies who are developing the applications and who are selling those applications in the market. So same way, Salesforce also providing a platform where we can develop the applications and after development, maybe you can use this, use in your organization or maybe you can sell to the other organization or maybe you can sell into the uh, app exchange market. App exchange is a place where all Salesforce application is registered. So if you want to build an application for app exchange product, you have to register there. And after registration, you, you can build any application over the Salesforce platform. And after development, you can, you can launch that application there. I will show you that thing also. So you understand now what is SaaS, what is PaaS. Got it. So whenever you want to build your own feature, we're going to use a pass, which is a force.com. And whenever we're going to use inbuilt application in Salesforce, we're going to use SAS, which is a salesforce.com.
got it uh let me know if you have any queries because these two are are the major one this one is uh it is a, it is also a part of sales but these these are the 80 percent of area where sales was focusing sas and pass because salesforce is not dealing this infrastructure as a service so it's right now salesforce are not dealing in this uh but salesforce planning to introduce this one also later on but right now this this one is not in pitch but overall as a general idea in the market if you go to the aws server aws dealing in all three aws also provide this infrastructure as a service platform as a service software as a service aws provide all three but right now salesforce only provide these two this one is not possible right now in salesforce but salesforce planning to implement in the IES here, here when we are going to develop the application, we also need a storage to host that application. We also need an infrastructure. So after development, when we're going to launch those applications, we're going to have a storage server also. So in the IES, there is only storage service servers are maintained. Now let me know if anybody have any confusion in, in SAS or PaaS because these two are the major ones. And the third one, when you finish your development in the custom application, now you want to launch your application. So to launch that application, now when end user is going to use that application, end user is going to use it because they want to store the data. So after this application development, where are you going to store the data? You need a storage. So to need a storage, you have to take the license of this IS, where you're gonna get your server storage network. And then you're gonna connect this IS to the pass. So whenever they're going to use this application, they're going to store the data into this. It is a, it is a technical term in the, in the backend, how the uh, infrastructure as a service and soft platform as a service are connected. Okay, let me check if we have any questions or query, not in the Zoom, I'm checking the Slack. Guys, please let me know if you have any confusion or can we move forward? Or you want me to repeat one more time? I'm, I, I'm happy to have you to give you one more. I have a confusion, yeah, yeah, go ahead. There are no question confusing whatever you think you can, whatever you feel it is a query or question, just just ask. No need to worry, no need to afraid. I I happy to answer all, all your questions, queries, because until and unless you're not going you're not going to ask the question, how I'm going to know that if you have any doubt or query. So it's good. Yeah, Maya, I'm looking forward. You can ask your question. Is that uh, where you differentiate the difference between developer admission? No, 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 no. Developer, admin, architect, that is from, that is in different slide. That is a role. Like once you learn the Salesforce admin and development, what are the career opportunity? What are the career role you can transfer? Because when you move into admin, there is some different models. When you move into development, there is a different model. When you move into consultant, there is a different model. When you move into architect, there is a different model. So salesforce.com is a SaaS, but you said we can create an application in App Exchange, which is in the salesforce.com. Yes, behind the scene, although when you're going to launch the salesforce.com in over there predefined applications, which you can use directly, but you log in as a salesforce.com to use those applications. Now you want to build an application. So we're going to use force.com. Yes, to create an application, we need a, a pass platform as a service, but the way to launch that platform, it is from the salesforce.com. So you need to log in into salesforce.com and over there one button, 
one setting which when you're going to click that setting it is going to launch the force.com as a platform dot platform as a service so the launching part is happening from the software as a service but when you click there it is going to launch your force.com services and once it is launched you can you can develop the application there so the login login into sas and into pass is the same but when you're going to i'll show you that from where you have to launch for the pass from where you have to launch the sas don't worry about it but the technical term is salesforce.com is a sas service and force.com is a pass service where we're going to develop the application it is a force.com where we're going to use that application it is a salesforce.com okay okay so set it up will launch the force.com which is a pass yes of course which is a pass and which is totally related to the force.com can you explain what do this abbreviation stand for software as a service it is in the previous slide uh, let me just go software as a service which is a saas platform as a service which is a pass infrastructure as a service which is a iaas this this definition is is in the previous slide which i have mentioned yep any more question guys yep got it okay shall we move forward guys yes okay all right so here's the example platform as a service so force.com is a cloud based platform where we can develop the cloud based application and website so one good thing you can develop your own website also in the salesforce platform and you can you can you can launch your website from the salesforce directly and if you want to market your products if you want to uh, launch the website for any reason you can do that so salesforce also provide the website feature so you can create a website in salesforce and you can launch and then you can develop some other custom application and you can launch with the help of force.com so force.com is a platform as a service and salesforce.com is a software as a service always remember and this is the software as a service these are the some of some of the example which i saas is a software distribution model in which application are hosted by the vendor so these application also developed by some of the vendors and we are just using so this gmail it is developed by google so we are just directly using facebook it is developed by the facebook owner and we are just using we are not doing any customization we are not developing any other features here we are just using but salesforce provide both way either you can use the inbuilt uh, application or if you want to build your own application you can do that and to build your own application we going to use platform as a service which is a force.com and when we going to use a inbuilt application which is a software as a service uh, which is a salesforce.com now before moving to the next slide i hope uh, you got the idea what is saas what is pass right uh, just checking the slack if we have all right so now this is uh from here the actual salesforce start so starting the salesforce first we required three things in the salesforce to understand the salesforce architecture because you know the salesforce is is over the cloud and over the cloud it is it is happening like a multi tenant architect so salesforce does not provide you a different instance salesforce using the multi tenant architect so multi tenant architect salesforce have a big server and that big server is used by other vendor also other vendor also means let's say right now in the market salesforce have a millions of customer so all millions of customer is using the same building same building means or same salesforce server and in that sales for server when you going to buy a license when your company going to buy a license and they going to 
uh, they want to use a Salesforce. So in the same building, they're going to get, get a dedicated space because it is a remote server. It is a remote server and remote database. So in that, you will get your dedicated server. You're not going to get a whole building. You're going to get only the dedicated space. Dedicated space means whatever license and whatever storage you're going to buy from Salesforce because that storage and license come with the different, different flavors. So if you buy an enterprise license, if you buy an ultimate license, if you buy, uh, there are some uh, license there, which I'm going to show you later on in the slide. What are the license available in the Salesforce? What are the storage limits we will get? What are the features we will get? It is in the next session. But for now, understand, when you're going to buy a license from Salesforce to use a Salesforce feature, you will get a dedicated space in the same storage. And in that storage, Salesforce provide you the same functionality which, which, is, which they are providing to the other vendors. So you're not going to get a whole building. You're going to get only the dedicated space. So this multi-tenant means there are a lot of other tenants also who are using the Salesforce and when you buy the license, you're also going to use the same Salesforce server. And in that Salesforce server, you're going to get your dedicated space. It means in this space, in this space, this tenant will not go. You also not going to any, any tenant space. It is only dedicated for you. So when you have your username and password and you log in, it is only accessible by you, nobody else. If they want to access, they cannot. If they want, if you want to access there, you cannot. Because it is it is protected by the Salesforce security layer. Is there a limit on Salesforce? Yes, definitely. Definitely. So whenever you buy any license or any addition of Salesforce, it comes with the limitations. What how much storage you will get? What is the storage limit? What are the file limits? So there are there are a lot of limits there. So later on, when you when you hit the limit, you can you can you can expand your uh, area also. So let's say this storage is full. So later on, you want to increase. So you can buy another storage. You can just pay to Salesforce, and Salesforce giving you the another instance, and they wanna connect it. Is there a pH in this building? Uh, sorry, I I didn't get this uh, pH. What do you mean? Okay, okay, that is, uh, it is not like that. It is just It is just for example purpose that Salesforce is a big giant right now. So whenever you're going to get the license, you will get the dedicated space in that building. So it is just for reference. I'm taking this building screenshot just to explain you that do not think when, whenever you're going to buy a license, you will get the whole, whole storage. You will get the same Salesforce server but you will get the dedicated space. So in that dedicated space, you're going to use your services. You're gonna you're gonna build your applications and do some customization and all. So it is like uh, then all the dedicated space is the same. So the all the dedicated spaces by uh, used by other people's because there are a lot of company who are also using. You just bought so. Uh, later on, when you finish this one, let's say you you hit the limit, you can you can raise a case to Salesforce. Salesforce going and you just buy the another one, and then was this one finished? Then you can so so uh, uh, using this storage, it is not it is not like it will take like almost ten years to fill. It is like it is like it is like your Google Drive. Uh, you have a Google Drive where you get the 15 GB storage as free. So when you bought a license, you will get like, I think one TB, uh, one to two TB space you will get. And this two TB space you will, you can use to build applications. You can build uh, your own application. You can customize the existing one, or you can store the data. You can store files. You can do anything. Does buying another license means increasing your dedicated space? but not sharing with anyone. No, buying the another license that 
you right now you bought one license to access this instance buying the another license means you are buying the second license so that second user can also access this one you are not going to get the another instance buying the another license will also give you the second way to access this one buying the another license it is a third way to access the same instance but if you want to increase the space you need to you need to uh, raise a case to the sales force so they going to increase when you going to pay to them so that's why the sales force license and storage come into the different different flavors which i'll show you uh, majorly in sales force there are uh, four types of license which come uh, with the storage limit i i have that uh, ppt in the next session which i'm going to explain so right now just understand that what is a multi tenant architecture multi tenant architecture means we going to use the same salesforce server and in that salesforce server we will get our dedicated space and in that dedicated space we going to use the application we going to build the application we go, we we going to do different steps and that building storage is is shared by you so it means uh, nobody can have a monopoly here so let's say if if anybody want to use all the storage it is not going to happen if you going to use the all the resources it is not going to happen you have your dedicated space you can use that so like a hotel apartment when you go in hotel you you took took one room and then you you just stay in that room so if you want to use it you can use in that room and then so something like that so this multi tenant architecture is like similar to that hotel room so you will get your dedicated space you can do over there you can use the application you can build your own applications and and vice versa uh okay uh, let me see if we have more question okay so guys you got the idea what is multi tenant architecture we are just going to use the our own dedicated space which is shared by other people okay how many people we have we have like almost 22 people i'm waiting for other people to answer as well and I, I, and i highly encourage you to ask more question guys whoever people is not not writing in a chat window or a slack i highly suggest you to ask start asking questions start because if you're not going to ask the question then i will not able to understand that whether you are grabbing the concept or not so please be interactive in the slack or maybe in zoom or if you like to unmute yourself you can unmute and you can directly speak so i would have to give you a clear view of the picture because one of the thing uh, i'm not from the it background in the beginning i'm i'm from non it background and since almost 5 year now i'm working as a sales force as an architect level so i can give you the best road map the best way to learn sales was very fast as well as in a better way because i have done some of the mistake in my early career so i don't want you to do the same mistakes so that's why i'm highly suggesting just try to be more like interactive and ask as many as question you have like renting an apartment in a building as a tenant you rent a unit a pay rent and also buy a license to access the unit right correct obviously definitely this is the perfect Uh, understanding special yes so the so the last piece of then let's assume uh, your friend will leave with you and he she will need to buy a license and need to pay it to no it is not like that so right now your friend is living right it is it is your second user and you also so you are the first user you are the second user and then third friend also living in the same apartment it means that they, that is a third user uh does buying more license require more space uh yes uh there is also a license limit so let's say because you know the whenever you go in hotel they allow only three or four people in one room so let's say if if the fifth people come so they that hotel guy will not let you in in the same room same way in the sales force have a license limit so up to certain license you can you can add here but after that if the limit uh, going to reach here uh, sales force suggest you to buy the another another dedicated area 
Yes, of course. Of Salesforce charging everything. Yeah, there's nothing free in the world, first of all. Salesforce also charging for everything. So do not think it is a free. It's, but the only thing Salesforce playing very smartly, that's why people believing because Salesforce fulfilling their needs. Salesforce also focusing on customer need. Uh, making money is enough, but Salesforce focusing on some other areas. as well. So that's why uh, in Salesforce, there's nothing free, but they are charging some amount for that. Uh, live with you, not live, sorry. Yep. So live, uh, if the another guy or a girl living with me, it's like a second user who who using that apartment. So think like if if I want to have uh, another user to access this dedicated space, I can buy I can buy a second license. And if I want to have a third license, then I can get a third license for that. So each license have a cost in Salesforce. Which company has more license and space? Can you please give us an example? There is a big example. I have worked. I have worked with the. Uh, if you have heard about the Gorilla Glass, which is a very famous company who built the Gorilla Glass for, not just for the mobile but also for for the uh, toughened glasses. I have worked with the Gorilla Glass company who built. They are using the Salesforce, and over there, there are fifteen hundred users. So they have fifteen hundred license in their Salesforce. Office. I have also worked with the. Uh, GNC product company. If you have heard of GNC, is a, a world-renowned company who who dealing with the uh, supplement products. So they have like almost 800 license. 800 users are using their Salesforce all just to maintain the Salesforce database. The Salesforce has a pay-as-you-go model, right? Salesforce have the same model, pay-as-you. But initially, you have to put some money. After that, you can uh, you can has a pay as you go to model. Initially, you have to buy a dedicated space, and then as you go, then you can pay. Does Amazon use Salesforce or has? Okay, uh, just give you a one clear picture. Amazon using a Salesforce. Google also using Salesforce, and Facebook now Facebook also going to use a Salesforce. To manage their WhatsApp activity, uh, they are planning to implement a Salesforce. Also, the company I have uh, Adobe also using Salesforce, Adidas also using Salesforce, Nike also using Salesforce, then GNC also using Salesforce, then uh, DIFC also using Salesforce. Because you know, if you if you if you go in, in the Amazon career, they are they are hiring for a Salesforce developer, Salesforce architect. Salesforce. So behind the thing, behind the scenes, some of the activities in the Amazon, they are managing over the Salesforce platform. Same way, Google also implementing the Salesforce practice because some of the data they are managing over the Salesforce. So that's why. So Salesforce is like almost whatever is the big company, any way, anyhow, they are using a Salesforce in the backend. So Salesforce is not just to just for CRM tool nowadays. Almost since five years when I enter into Salesforce, since then till now, like uh, companies have changed everything. Company has changed everything. The business model have changed the use of Salesforce. Previously it is using like a CRM, but now it is using like a, a cloud storage uh, uh, or, a, or a building an application, building the desired application for desired customers and to store the data. So it is up to you how you want to use the Salesforce. It is not just in CRM now. It is more than that. It is it is it is like an empty paper for you, uh, a clear paper where you have to draw. So you can draw anything. You can build anything on, on Salesforce platform. Uh, since I'm working like almost five years now, so I can say that uh, you can build anything on Salesforce. Okay. Okay. Let me see if we have more questions. Yeah, thanks for putting that uh, link, uh, Oz. So since we are talking the limits, so 
in the Salesforce, we have a governor limits. So whenever you bought any license or any addition, it comes with the set of limitations. And that limitation is, is just to uh, revoke the monopolize of resource. Because in that building, if you're going to use all the resource, then it is going, uh, you're gonna be monopolized. So Salesforce does not, does not want to do that. That's why Salesforce put some limitations on each license, on each addition, they have put some restriction. So whenever you hit that limit, you just contact to Salesforce. It is not your duty. First of all, this uh, buying a license, buying an additions and doing anything, it is not your duty. It is the company account executive duty who going to buy the license, who going to increase the limit. It is not your duty. I will, when I'm going to explain you the career highlights, career role model, on that time, I will explain you what, what are the areas you should focus more. It is not your duty to, uh, to buy a license to increase the limit. It is the company account representative who, who contact to the Salesforce who bought the license. It is their duty. So it is not your duty. Your duty is to manage the Salesforce as a Salesforce admin or develop an application as a developer or working as a consultant to, to provide the company or an, or an organization developer as a good way to do the best practice over the Salesforce or, or maybe a design and application, a whole new application as an architect. Those are your duties, which I'm going to explain you one by one in the, in the later on. I mean, not, 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 I think we have uh, less time now. Uh, maybe tomorrow in the next slide, the upcoming slide, I'm going to explain. So magic of metadata. So these three things you need to understand. First is the multi-tenant architecture. Second one is there is a limits. Each addition, each license have a limit in Salesforce just to uh, revoke the monopolize of resource. And then the magic of metadata, because you know that Salesforce is changing their feature. They are increasing their feature. They're including more features. Uh, for uh, four months, uh, every four months. So in every four months, Salesforce adding some features. Salesforce adding some uh, extra things or removing some previous things which are not usable. So that is happening through metadata. Now this metadata, what is metadata? I'm going to explain you uh, in a tomorrow because to explain this metadata, I'll require at least 20 to 25 minutes. So um, this is this is on me. I'm going to explain you on tomorrow. What is a metadata? Because uh, metadata think like uh, when you open your Excel sheet, when you put something, when you store the data in Excel sheet, so that Excel sheet is your metadata. And the, inside the Excel sheet is your actual data. So same way, Salesforce provide a metadata to us. In that, we're going to store the data. So metadata is data about data. It means, let's say, I want to store my name inside Salesforce. So to store my name, I should need a container inside a Salesforce. So that container call a metadata, where my name is going to store where my photo is going to store. So whichever things going to hold that thing, it is that container is a metadata. So Salesforce, Salesforce focus on metadata things because uh, that's how they are uh, implementing their features. That's how they are uh, releasing their updates uh, once in a, every four months. So this thing I will explain you in a broad way uh, in a tomorrow class. So, so these are the Salesforce cloud right now in the market who are very much popular. And I, and I highly suggest you to, to focus on these cloud more. So in, in our Salesforce journey, I'm going to explain the sales cloud as well as the service cloud, but there are marketing cloud as well. There are community cloud as well. There is a IoT cloud as well. These are just some of the cloud name which you should aware. In the sales cloud, we're going to see that how we can manage the sales activity, how we can record the sales activity, how we can configure the sales activity and so on. And in service cloud, 
how we can configure manage custom service activities based on the business requirement. Now, here the thing that uh, I was talking to you that some of the all these clouds are on the in the yes all these clouds are in the Salesforce domain. Yes, because these are the pre-built application Sales Cloud Service Cloud. These are the pre-built application marketing cloud, community cloud. These are the pre-built application which is over the Salesforce.com. And then there, there are two part in Salesforce. One is the admin and then second one is service. So right now we just started the admin part. It is just an overview of Salesforce. But from tomorrow onwards, we're going to start the admin part one by one. And then there is a development part. So admin part is that every functionality is built already. You just have to turn on, turn off, configure some settings, and that thing will automatically work. It is an admin part. Development part, you're going to write a code, and then after writing a code, you're going to build the functionality. So in Salesforce, there are two ways to build the functionality. One is admin, where you're not going to write anything, where you're just going to turn on some settings, uh, do some extra configurations and then the things will work. And in development, you're going to write a code where it is going to build an application automatically. So writing a code or developing a code in Salesforce is, is not that much uh, hard like a previous days, like a Java developer, like a .NET developer, like a Python developer. You you not you no need to require uh, so much algorithms, so much data structure languages. All you need a little bit programming knowledge, uh, knowledge, and you are good to go. Which is, which is uh, going to be explained by the when we're going to start the development part. But our focus for for the next one month, our focus is on admin part, where I'm going to explain you each and everything related to sales and service cloud. So these are the environment we have in Salesforce. So uh, let's see. So here I'm going to start my PPT and my developer has have admin knowledge, same as right. Yeah, uh, keep your questions uh, noted down somewhere. Uh, from here, we're gonna start tomorrow because I need to hand over the class uh, to the next trainer who's going to take your project. Okay, I, I have noted down your question, so I will explain you this thing. Uh, but developer has to have admin knowledge. Definitely, this is the correct. Uh, the, it is the answer itself. If you want to uh, become, uh, want to be a good developer in Salesforce, you have to have a good admin area also. So that is why. That is why. Yeah, PPT. I'm going to post it when when we finish everything in this PPT. I'm going to post. So probably tomorrow I'm going to finish all the all the things in this PPT. So I will post this PPT in the tomorrow class. So you can have and you can look into it. So uh, let me just make a host to the next trainer. Uh, Amit, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Uh, yeah, hi, good, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, based on your time zone. Uh, let me just make you host. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, before starting, uh, let me just thank you guys. Have a great day once again. And please keep your question and note it down somewhere. And we're going to start tomorrow from where we left. Thank you, everyone. And uh, let me just stop the recording as well. Christian, can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can hear you very clearly. And can we start okay. your sharing? Okay, so uh, we are going to take like a 10 minutes break and then yes. after that we will start. Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ahmed, you can stop the recording because now you are the host. So you can stop the recording and then start again. Okay, mm -hmm. I will do that.
Okay. Have a great day, guys. Bye.